Hi, I'm Hannah, this is Piles of Books, and today I'm going to be sharing my July 2024 TBR. Alright, so once again, June has been a fantastic reading month, and I am looking forward to sharing all of those books with you next week. And I am looking forward to beginning a new stack of books in July. So first of all, we have um, Jane Austen July going on, and I did a whole video about that previously, so you can check that out. Um, but I did just choose two um, books from that to kind of prioritize for the month of July. So I have them on the stack today, and I will share them with the rest of the books. So let's get into it. Okay, so um, I also recently did a video. What would that be? By the time you're seeing this... That'll be just last week, I think. <laughs> um, I did a video about some of my reading plans and how they're changing and adapting for the rest of the year. So some of these books will have to do with that as well. Um, but we will start with the two books that I am going to prioritize for Jane Austen July. The first one is What Jane Austen Ate and Charles Dickens Knew. I am <laughs> really um, excited about this book. So this will be for the part of the challenge that is to read a um, non-fiction work about Jane Austen or the times that she lived in. So this is going to be a really fun one. And the other one is, um, I was originally just going to choose Lady Susan from this bind up of short works of Jane's, but then I realized that I needed a short story collection for Chantel's Read Your Bookshelf Challenge, and so this is going to double up as that. And again, I am very excited to read um, all three stories in here, especially Lady Susan. So in the video that I made last week about um, some of the changes that I'm making to my reading challenges and um, my reading habits for the year, I mentioned that I wanted to read some biographies. So I chose three and I talked about them a little bit in that video, but the one that I chose to do in July is this, The Prize Winner of Defiance, Ohio, How My, Red, How My Mother Raised 10 Kids on 25 Words or Less by <laughs> Terry Ryan. Again, this just looked like a fun one. I don't really know anything about the story, but I am looking forward to reading it. And um, the font is pretty large, so I don't think that it will take me too long to get through this one. Um, there are some, not necessarily illustrations, but like grocery ads and different things from the times through here. So it looks like it's going to be a really neat story and I hope that it lives up to that. Another thing that I wanted to add in um, for the rest of the year was to read several works by Louisa May Alcott. I'm not sure if I'll do one a month. Um, I mean... Ideally, I would do one a month, but I'm not sure if I can fit that many in. But the one that I chose for July is An Old Fashioned Girl. So I've never read this, but I have had several people recommend it to me recently, both in real life and here on BookTube. So that's been kind of fun, and I feel like that this would be a good one um, to read now. So uh, this is one that I would possibly read out loud with my kids. Um, we have a different read aloud scheduled for July for a little book club that I'm starting, um, but we may do this one as well or instead of that. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to work it out, or maybe I'll just read it on my own. I am really excited to be continuing with reading more of Louise's books. I'm, I've only read a few, and um, I just, I don't know why I haven't read more of them, because I have enjoyed the ones that I have read so, so much. They're very enduring and lasting stories I find very sweet and charming and just just all around enjoyable so I'm looking forward um, like I said to continuing on with that and then I also have the first book in my Harvard uh, Harvard classics this set right behind me here so I did start this first volume back I think in May um, but I didn't get too far so this has um, the, bio the Autobiography of Benjamin Franklin, and then The Journals of John Woolman. Sorry, I'm trying to get... The pages are kind of stick together. This is a pretty old book. Um, and then Fruits of Solitude by William Penn. So I'm going to plan to read all of this and then probably just do a separate video on it, like at the end of the month or whenever I finish it. So... Um, you can be looking for that. I'll probably try to take notes and um, it might be like a longer 
video. I might have to break it up into three videos considering it's like three different books. But anyway, I will be reading this in July. I started, another one that I've started and haven't finished, is All Creatures Great and Small by James Harriet. So I read the first four or five chapters in here and loved it. I am looking forward to um, continuing it. I just... I didn't want to put it down, but I had some books that I really needed to prioritize finishing. So I decided to set this aside this last week and just work on finishing um, several. I had several books that were close to being finished and I wanted to get those done by the end of the month. So we're just going to carry this one over into July. This um, is, if you're not familiar with it, James Harriet. That's not his real name, I don't think. Um, but this is like a true story or based on a true story of a vet in... Is it England or Ireland? It's England, I think, but I'm not actually sure. Anyway, um, and he's just kind of a country veterinarian and um, just his stories are delightful. My kids and I have loved, loved his children's storybook over the years. We've read it many times and this is proving to be just as delightful as that. The next, I have one book that I am reading for the Literary Life um, podcast reading challenge. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, the, their theme this year is Books of Centuries. So for each century, you're reading two books. Um, and then at, there's also like one for biblical times, one for mythology, and one for ancients. Um, I'm not necessarily working through them in order. I was... <laughs> planning to do that at the beginning of the year, but it just hasn't worked out that way. So I wanted to choose a shorter book this month because I have several other reading things going on and it, it's July, it's summer, it's busy. So the one that I chose to do for this month is The Vicar of Wakefield by Oliver Goldsmith. So this will be for one of the 18th century books. Um, this is, I, when I bought this book, I looked it up and I did know what it was about, but I have forgotten. And now that I'm, I'm wondering if this is abridged. I'm not seeing right off that it is, but I am definitely gonna look into that first because I have another or two other books, I think, in this um, Oxford World's Classic set that are abridged. <laughs> so I wanna make sure that this one's not. The other ones say just kind of outright, but anyway, it says the Vicar of Wakefield Goldsmith's only novel was first published in 1766. It went into three editions in five months and became one of the most popular works of fiction of the 18th century. The story tells of the follies, misfortunes, and joys of the Primrose family. At its center is that fallible paragon, the Vicar, the kindly and unworldly narrator. Though the plot is sentimental, this is in fact a special kind of comic novel, a story of suffering which we know from the outset will end happily. We read it as a domestic ideal, very like a fairy tale with a charm and humor which are irresistible. So, anyway, that does sound exciting. And the last book I have to share with you today is a nonfiction book that I have from um, my library. This is called Quiet Power, <laughs> The Secret Strength. For, of Introverts by Susan Cain. Um, I did a review on my Instagram and then in a book, like a reading group that I'm in on Facebook as well, of the book um, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie that I read a couple of months ago. And um, this book was recommended to me a couple of times. There were a few ladies that said um, that they kind of agreed <laughs> with my uh fairly negative review, I guess, of that book, and they said to read this one instead. So I grabbed a copy from the library. Again, the font is pretty large, and um, it doesn't look like it's going to be um, take very long for me to get through. I am excited about this one. So I liked the premise of How to Win Friends and Influence People, like the idea of it, <laughs> but I did not like the book itself. So if you want to see more of my thoughts on that. You can look back at that previous video. Um, I believe it would have been my May wrap up. April maybe? No, I think it was my May wrap up. Anyway, I didn't care for it at all, but I am looking forward to reading this one instead. 
Okay, so there are all of the books that I have planned to read for the month of July. Um, oh, the other thing is, is that I do want to read Mansfield Park. That is the group read or one of the group reads for Jane Austen July. Um, I will probably end up doing that one on audio. I, I haven't completely decided. I have a love-hate relationship with audiobooks, and I have always felt that I do better um, with nonfiction audiobooks because if I lose a little bit of the story on a fictional audiobook, then it's hard for me to like catch up and put the pieces together. But I have been um, kind of exercising that skill of listening um, the last few months, and I will listen to audiobooks while I'm gardening or folding laundry or hanging laundry out on the clothesline. Um, or just like sitting outside, you know, while the kids are playing and maybe I'm working on a hand sewing project or a crocheting project or something. And so I do feel like I could handle something a bit more complex like Jane Austen. I am currently finishing up North and South on audio and I previously listened to Agnes Grey. North and South, neither one of those are like extremely complex. I like I feel like Jane Austen is a bit more complex with her characters than these two books have been, but um, I, I do think that I probably can handle it. <laughs> so I will most likely listen to that on audio. And if I feel like I can't do that, then maybe I'll swap it out and read that book and listen to one of these other books on audio. So we'll see how that goes. As far as I do have other books that I <laughs> really want to read in the month of July, I've got some library books that um, are going to need to be going back and all of that. So I might try to fit in a couple of extras. However, like I said, it's July, it's busy. So I don't know how much reading I'm actually going to get done. I'm fairly confident I can get through these, but I don't know if I can do any extras. So we will see how the month goes. And I am looking forward to sharing all of my June books next week. There have been some real winners this month. It's been a great reading month. If you have any thoughts or comments on any of these books that I mentioned today, I would love to hear that in the comments below. Also, what you're planning to read in July, it is, it truly is. I know I say this from probably every TBR video or even more than that, um, most likely. I, but I do really enjoy hearing what other people are reading and I get so many ideas from you guys and from other booktubers and from the comments on videos by other booktubers. This is just, it's a great community and I love being here and hearing what other people are reading and loving at the time. So if you want to talk to me in the comments about what you plan to read or some of these books that I'm planning to read in July, that would be super fun. Thank you for being here and we will see you in the next video. Thank you.